And the answer is that in September, when we, oh, where's Mr. Wilson? That's right. Uh, but we should, that's, no, we need to wait for him. That's not, can we peek outside? I, I think that's polite to wait. Oh, is he outside? I don't know where he is, but I mean, I think people in that. He'd be communicating with. Okay. <laughs> um, are, is everybody ready to start? Oh, not really. Well, that one's been cool, though. He's talking. He knows, Terry, so I, he I, knows. So he said, I'm coming in, he's still talking, so I think we can continue. Okay. Um, so the reason I put number uh, item eight on the agenda is that in our September 29th meeting, the special meeting, you might remember we had to squeeze in nominations for the county committee on school district administration. Correct. Right. And when I asked for nominations for the district two seat, um, Carrie nominated Steve Guile, and I, I moved on. And I think it was Carrie who asked the question, what, there isn't gonna be any second? And, mm -hmm. and because next month we're gonna have our own school board election. That makes sense. Uh, I thought we should clarify this, because I went and I looked through all the district policies, all the CSBA policies, and there's absolutely nothing about nominations and elections. So what you have here is material that is excerpted from Robert's Rules of Order, because that's our secondary uh, running the meeting document. And it seems to me to be a, a reasonable set of processes. So I would recommend that we adopt as a process. Uh, one, the president calls for nominations. Recognition by the chair is not required to make a nomination. So you can't have the chair playing favorites when deciding who gets to make a nomination first. It's he or she who shouts first is. Uh, nominations don't have to be seconded, but it's not out of order for members to second a nomination to signal their endorsement. A member shall not offer more than one nomination for a position if there are several seats on the same office until all other members have had the opportunity to make a nomination. Nominations are taken for successive office in the order that they're listed in Board Bylaw 9100. Nomination process continues until nobody wishes to make a further nomination. The chair declares nominations closed. Election for each position takes place immediately after nominations have closed. Uh, election shall be by roll call with each member of the board announcing his or her preferred candidate. Secretary shall re record the vote of each board member. Candidate is elected when he or she receives the votes of a more majority of the board members. Not board members present and voting, but a majority of the board members. Are you, do we have that, what you're still reading from? Yeah, it's right, it's right in the, the line. Did you go back up? Oh, because I was, okay. I was, I was down below and then, okay, I was like, I guess I'm missing something. Nominations from the floor. Is there a third page? Can I look over your shoulder? That didn't come it's up right when I. It's in the agenda itself. It's, on the it, it's not an attachment. Oh, see, I just have all the attachments. Okay, I need to look over your shoulder, please. I'm sorry, I didn't. That's why I was getting lost. He just read the. Right, right. Do you mind if I take it? Because I can blind. And just hold it closer for a second. Okay, so election for each position uh, takes place immediately. Candidate is elected, receives the votes of a majority of board members. If no candidate is elected on the first ballot, candidate with the fewest votes will be eliminated and another roll call vote conducted. 
so and the reason for that part of it is if somebody's nominated for president but not elected as president, then they can be nominated as clerk. So you have the order in oh, which you're going to do things. And you have so can I ask a question? Uh, sure. So like what? Because last time when we did it, not the last time when you were elected, I think it was when I was, it was confusing. So somebody made a nomination and we had to vote right then and there. So like let's say three people get nominated. I mean, it was confusing because after the first person got nominated, they had a vote. I mean, like let's say somebody wanted to vote. Yeah, it was, it was, it was odd. Well, it, that, so the way this is, everybody that... So potentially you could have five nominees. I mean, I think that's unrealistic. You, you could. So everybody. That, so when you say you don't have to be recognized, the first person that jumps in, is that going to be? I mean, what is? And then you said they voted in the order. So what is? No. It, so, so you're. These are nominations for president. Let's say. Right. For and some. if there are three nominations, so. Susan and Val and I are nominated. Then the clerk will call the roll, and you will say, "I vote for so and so, one of those three. Oh, perfect. Okay, so you don't. I got it. That makes sense. Okay. Yes. Because if you had to vote for all at Instead one time, do you have to vote for yourself? Yeah. I'm sorry. You should. I'm just making a joke. I'm just okay. Making a joke. So the other thing <laughs> depends if you want it or not. <laughs> yeah. yeah you the other thing that I'm going to recommend is that we actually add this to the governance handbook because we're trying to keep our policies and bylaws aligned with the CSBA ones. This material isn't covered in any of the CSBA uh, documents. So my suggestion is that we just put it in the governance handbook. I see that again. Sounds good. I like that idea to put it in the handbook. Oh, I see, announcing his or her preferred candidate. That's great, Terry. I think that looks good. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Thanks then for doing that. When, when we get into the governance handbook, then we'll take a vote action to make a formal offset. But we will use this process next month. Okay, next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. Uh, we didn't have any requests to remove anything from the consent agenda when we considered uh, agenda changes. So I'm ready to accept a motion that we approve the consent agenda. I move. We have a motion from Member Friend. We have a second. I'll second. Second from Member Wright. Is there any further discussion on the consent agenda? Uh, can you pull the, the Member word, Wright. please? Aye. Member Friend? Aye. President True? Aye. Member Brown Al? Aye. Member Walson? Aye. Okay. Now, you would think in most organizations that the action section session would be where the action is, right? <laughs> <laughs> but here we are, two and a half hours into the public session, and we finally get to the action session. And we only have two items on it. Um, one of them is approval of board policies and board bylaws. And uh, are there people? Uh, are there people with specific comments or suggestions or concerns about any of the? Proposed changes here. Hold on, I'm scrolling, scrolling. Uh, I had a clarification question. Do, so, are you wanting to do all of these at once, if possible? Uh, that's what I would recommend. If mm -hmm. I would ask for a motion to do that, if, so, if nobody on. has any. Uh, hold on, let me see yeah. if that's if that's just the one question I have. I can let that one go. I took notes on here, so give me a second. Oops. Well, I have two questions, actually. I have a small problem, too. Sorry. Did we go through the um, internet safety policies already? Did we approve I, that, like in a blanket thing, and I missed I, it? I'm sorry? That would have been... That's the SIPA. I guess that was the... Oh. SIPA was on... Darn it. Okay. <laughs> I meant to comment on that. 
Okay. And I know. Just, just to, to reaffirm the way, the right way to comment on that would be when we're discussing the agenda, that you'd say, I'd like to pull item six off the consent agenda. Okay, so, so that would have been the agenda right at the beginning. At the very beginning of yeah, the at meeting. The very beginning. Yeah, okay. You have to do homework. Actually, I meant to tell you that after last meeting when you asked about the, my professional development. Oh. Because that was after it was it was done. So. Okay, so I need to do that at the beginning. Yeah, anything you have questions yeah. on that's on the consent, you need to pull it in the beginning. So that goes where? Before closed session, right. the approval oh, so of the agenda. So one. Here, right? Yeah, wait, long page. One, two. Yeah, right, right here, number two. And number two, public comment and closed session. No, 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 this is number two. A one, two, one, one, approval two. of agenda? Yeah. yeah. Approval of agenda. Oh, that's this yeah. agenda, and then yeah, I'd like to pull. Because otherwise, if it's not pulled, we don't talk about it, we just approve it. Oh, darn it, okay. <laughs> and and before we did that, we have, we yeah. go through the warrants or something, it just took forever. Many, many groups allow, uh, the Board of Supervisors being the most obvious one, allow comments on consent agenda items, even though they're still going to consider them as a whole. Uh, we don't have any particular, we have done that at some time. I think, I right. think you can but table there's, individual there's, ones to go. There, there's to nothing them. wrong with commenting on something. It's if you, you need to pull it if you don't want to approve it as that whole batch. Right. And yeah. vote on it separately and discuss it and decide at that point whether or not you want to approve it. So well, you can, at the beginning of the consent agenda, you can comment on the And if I have questions about it and you all of that, it. then you... If you want to discuss yeah. it and get okay. into back and forth, then okay. yeah, you need to pull it. All right. So study can Sipa, we, I can talk to you later about you, it. You, okay. said you, you said you had a comment on that. Well, I just had, I actually had questions too, and I think I just wanted to talk about it amongst all of us, and just to get any like input from other board members if anybody else cared about it, like I do. Well, that's not a nice way to put it. Of course we care about it. Well, <laughs> I didn't mean it. No, because it, it's, I, it's my hot button, it's, right. sure. and it's not anybody else's hot button. So, um, well, it, well, it, it depends on um, what you bring up, though. And, and you know, just like I, I'm a newbie, so are you. And you know, these are things that we need to know from you guys. Yeah. Uh, that that really helps out, and and uh, you know, I I kind of like to hear what you. Yeah, and, say. and I don't think you're questioning whether or not you want to vote for it and approve oh, it. Oh, not you, at all. You just like so. Yeah. I think it's within the president's purview to allow you to make your comments. Still. So. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Is everybody else? Yes. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. I just um, this is on the the SIPA complaint, the Cayuga our district, our internet safety policy. Um, they just went into some definitions and access to inappropriate material. Um, and so I, one of the questions I had was who determines what's harmful and what's not harmful? And I know there's like this Children's Internet Protection Act blocking um, and, you know, just more information about how our kids are protected um, while they're on the internet. And so that is a requirement of us receiving E-rate funds. E-rate funds. E-rate funds are special funds that we get that discount our internet connection drastically. Um, you can also apply for E-rate funds for special equipment to purchase. Um, for us right now, it's mainly our internet connection gives us a huge discount on it. Um, part of taking E-rate funds means you have to jump through the federal hoops. One of those hoops is you have to adopt that policy officially um, for the district. Now, when we get into what specifics are implemented in the district, that would be more in our technology use agreement, which isn't board adopted as part of the family handbook. And so I would be happy to discuss those items with you, work on modifications. Um, annually, every summer, we update the family handbook and uh, um, make sure our technology use agreement is still relevant. Um, so by all means, if um, you'd like to collaborate on it, I'd be happy to do so. Okay. Um, Susan, that's Sunday. I'm just writing myself a note. I, we had these huge articles 
last year on SIPIT when I got my master's. I can send you those articles. Okay. They're pretty, it, they're long, but it'll give you an understanding of what you have to follow and what you have to do and why it is. And Just that, just that the safety, and who, is Sean Anderson the one in charge of making sure that all the things are like in place that kids can't get around? Like who's in charge of that? So it's a collaboration with him and the people that support us from the County Office of Ed. Um, and we do have internet filtering in place that's a requirement um, of that policy and the Child Internet Protection Act. Okay, so that would be Sean and the uh, board? And, and, and the filter they, has they've assist. worked to put the filter in place that um, those filters are updated automatically by those companies. You get a subscription. so. They're constantly hunting the internet, adding things to the block list, um, constantly refining those lists so that the filter works properly. But no filter is 100. Yeah. Well, and sometimes it can be a it can be a hindrance to the teachers too. Things that educationally appropriate are blocked, and then you have to get unblocked. I mean, that's a whole. Well, you know. and, and that's mentioned. Does our fee actually come physically through Slope Um Or no. Well, yes and no. Our our connection to Sloco is charter cable. Yeah. And then once it hits Sloco, um, we share their internet connection. Okay, but we don't have direct connection to the internet here. No. We have direction to the filters and the processes. Our, our, and we do have a filter here, but I believe they also filter at their level. Okay. Well, yeah, because well, my, we did have a little access to some YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so I was curious how that, I think that one got stopped though, but anyway. It's always a moving target on yeah. filtering, that's for sure. Yeah, song. But I'd, I'd be happy to, to look at those policies and, and receive input on um, updating them. And, uh, and once we get some ideas, uh, I can collaborate with Mr. Anderson and all the county on it. Okay, and I, yeah, because I just wanted the other board members too. Because this is all new to everyone. This is not, and this is, you know, none of us grew up with it, and it's a whole new thing here that I think I would like all of all of us to be mindful of, um, you know, especially the inappropriate network usage. Well, just look at what's all these, um, you know, Google and and all these people who've just been be before the Senate. Uh, committee on this sort of thing being you know told that they you know it's it's no free check if you're going to have this contact with people you have to take responsibility for it and they're you know waving their hands like well it's free speech well you know it's it's yelling fire in a crowded theater you know and, well you're right right now the internet is the wild west i mean look at the dark web it's something else. Can you look at the dark web? <laughs> it's dark. How can you? <laughs> you need a big flashlight. Um, you need to know the right um, suffixes to go there seemingly, and they're all semi-secret. I never. Read How them. can there be a secret from the internet? <laughs> yeah, you can only communicate with me if you know the magic code, but. The only way I can give you the magic code is if you know the magic code. Well, let's move on. <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, well, um, anyway, thank you all for, I just, it's something that I'm no, very it's, it's interested really, in. Yeah. Happy and I think it. actually a couple of you guys have sent me articles in the past, like from the gate, the Melinda Gates being very concerned and her kids and just, you know, people that are in it and have made huge profits because of it are very protective around it too with their kids. So. May I add one thing? Um, Tara, I appreciate you making an exception to revisit this um, because, you know, this agenda is here to serve you guys. Um, and and <coughs> this is a good example of the agenda serving you instead of you serving the agenda. Um, you know, if it's, if it's publicly posted, you have the right to talk about it. Great. And you can, you can work with one another to make it work for yourselves so that you're all comfortable with it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, 
So now we'll move to 10.1. We didn't approve them. I, no, we're I know. I said we're going to oh, move to 10.1. <laughs> Sorry, I was off by a number. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Um, and Carrie, you indicated that, that I, I. No, I figured out the comments I had. I, I don't have any. Okay. I, I will make a general statement on these. I sat here and I read through them and I read the titles and I said, oh, vision, philosophy, uh, not so much, you know, so, vision and philosophy. I said, you know, we really don't do a good job of that compared to many other districts. So one of the things that we'll be doing at the December meeting is talking about our priorities for next year. And I really encourage you to think about what's important to you or how you think we could improve this. Uh, I have to say that I'm not a big vision and philosophy guy, but I I feel guilty when I don't do it, even though I'm, I tend to be, I, I have other, I, I tend to focus on the short term. Um, Mr. Wilson. Uh, when we've done this before, which we've done a lot of times, is I started looking at other districts and what they do, and some of them, and the state is a good place, the State Board of Education, is they're briefer. Yeah. To get to a general point of, you know, of departure rather than, you know, it's it's long and, and wordy here and they they do it and and the it's just a starting point for doing good things and um, and those are encompassing of what you see in these. It's just it just makes it it makes it easier and it's easier to express to the public, I think. So. If I, I know when I went to the, the Tascadero School Board meeting, um, the, they had on the front wall of the room in which we had the meeting, they had their, it's sort of like the Ten Commandments for Tascadero. <laughs> but they have, that means they have to be short, but they're always there for the public to see. The board has their back to them, so the board maybe can ignore them. <laughs> Literally and figuratively. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And then, uh, literally, figuratively, I don't know, I didn't observe them. Um, but there are things there that, that can help us to be more cohesive and can help us to have some commonly identified Things. And and the board, uh, the governance handbook is the same thing. The governance handbook is often where the vision and the philosophy details are stored, so that you can find them and you know, try to work with them. Um, any more comments, discussion? Then um, it. Um, I would I would just like to make one other comment about it. Um, obviously, a lot of board policies update on a regular basis. Um, and, you know, these are basically CSBA recommended updates. They come through on a regular basis. It's a moving target to know board policy and board bylaws all the time. So um, I would just encourage our newest members that, um, I, you know, I wouldn't feel bad if occasionally um, they change all the time. So none of us can be masters of them. That's why we let gamut. So, um, and if I know. could um, comment as well, the most current board policies are in the binders in the office. They are not the ones that are on our website because CSBA is about six months behind updating. Once you update a policy, at a board meeting, I send that to them. Oh, you can't can, update it. They have I to. I have to send it to them, and then they have to upload it onto um, our own page. Well, that's so annoying. if you want to know, and there was one reference tonight, if you want to know, right. you should come and look in the binders. That's because there are, what, 900 school districts? Correct. <laughs> yeah. Changing and uploading, yeah. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Um, is there a motion then to adopt items 
10.1 through 10.1.8. I'll make that motion. Mr. Wilson, Wilson any motion? Is there a second? I'll uh, second it. Um, is there a second? Is there further discussion? Uh, Hannah, if you would. Member Friend? Aye. President Truth? Aye. Member Brownell? Aye. Member Wilson? Aye. Member Wright? Aye. And now, the thing you've all been waiting for is the review and approval of the 2016-17. So everybody audit. read it. Not all of it. And it's Superintendent it. Smith, you, you have the fun of leading us through the highlights. Of this okay. present I, I would prefer that you not lead us through all the details. You know, I start, right? Okay, um, I think I can work with that. So, um, not to ruin a good novel, but let's read the ending. Um, page 80, in, or 81, is the, um, I'm sorry, where is 81? Page 80, yes, yeah, schedule of findings and questioned costs. Um, yes, this is next page. Basically, um, due to Rebecca, Melanie's, and I helped a little bit, um, <laughs> work, um, we have no findings. Yay. Which is what we want, no findings. They didn't find any irregularities, they didn't find any lack of internal controls. Um, they didn't find any inappropriate expenditures. So um, that's the best audit report um, we could wish for. Um, then the other thing that I think you may be interested in, and I alluded to this um, a couple meetings ago, is page 70. Um, page 70 um, shows the financial trends. Um, you can see that um, I would direct you to the first paragraph underneath all the numbers where it says the general fund balance has increased by 73,900 over the past two years. And since we ran a very conservative budget and we are looking at a possible deficit spending of 200,000 this year, um, I was at a recent um, meeting where the uh, county treasurer um, did a report to the CBO, um, countywide CBO meeting. Uh, our current budget, I believe, is based off of a 4% increase in tax revenues. Um, the latest estimate from the county treasury is they expect it to come in at at least 5.5. So that's continued good news and should take care of any um, possible deficit spending in this year's budget. Um, it might be close, but we'll, but we'll be right there. And so I thought you'd be interested in those things. So it was estimated at 4.2. It says that on page 13. And what is it now, probably? 5.5 uh, was what the treasurer, um, the representative from the treasurer's office. Um, but that's just their current estimate. Um, their estimate last year at this time, it ended up coming in higher. And it ended up coming in at 6.18, significantly higher than their estimate. So. Their estimate is also always a little conservative. Um, but bottom line is, um, they're projecting higher than our budget based off of. I think that's all the relevant stuff. The rest of it um, is just the documentation that goes along with no findings. Mm -hmm. So if it's just staying on page 70, Mm -hmm. uh oh, you're going to play stump the superintendent. That's no, an no, easy no, game no, to play. No, no. All right, go ahead. No, no, no. So <laughs> there's a statement in the second paragraph. The district has incurred operating surpluses in all of the past three years 
and anticipates incurring an operating deficit for next year. And, and you've already addressed that, mm -hmm. okay. Um, but if I go up to three lines up from the bottom in the chart, it says available reserves as a percentage of total output. Mm -hmm. And so you can see in 2015, we had a 26% and then 22%, and now we're down to, for 2016-17, we're down to 16.4%, and our board stated goal is 15% on that line, correct? That's mm -hmm. not the same, it's not the same. I don't think that we, I don't think that percent is the same thing in 15 and 16. We were closer to 15%. I don't think that number is the same as the reserves. Well, sort of. Okay, well, that's it not. It says available reserves as a percentage of total output. Okay, well, I don't recall in 16 and 17 ever having 26.2% or 22.4% because the union would have thumped us to increase teacher salary because that's way, way too high of a, of a that's, not, that's an irresponsibly high reserve. We've been barely getting to 15%, so I'm curious where that <coughs> number came from, because the three-year, that's one of the things I wrote about, the three-year projections has us going down as well, and I, I don't have, I didn't bring that budget with me. But I'm curious where this, that's, I don't believe those are the same numbers that are as listed as reserves in our well, other budget. Well, Either way, they're going down. I didn't well, know. Okay, I'm sorry, go ahead. Budgets are estimates. This is the auditor's assessment of actuals. Um, so they don't necessarily line up. Um, bottom line is that we did, um, at the end of last fiscal year, do those set-asides. Um, they were listed in um, this year's budget as set-asides. Um, and so, you know, there was, um, we did pretty well last year. We did pretty well. Um, as our um, expenditures, though, go up over time, the increased costs, um, even though our reserves, whereas our, um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty clear the auditor shows that in 2015, 751,000. Um, but I hear what you're saying. Yeah, I don't. Um, but, but, and, and just one thing to think about if you look at the line sort of in the middle of that chart that is labeled increase, parents decrease, and fund balance. So that's essentially our operating income. For the year turned into school language, right? So 62,000 in 2015, 6,000 in 2016, and then 68,000 last year, correct? That's the increase. In fund You're looking at right? increase and in decrease in fund balance. Where did, yeah. where did you get your number? Yeah. You, um, it's uh, kind of in the middle of the chart, the first one with the double lines underneath. Yeah, I, I see oh, it. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. where, yeah, so uh, if, where does that number come from? If you look up above, the, the second line of numbers is total revenues and other sources. Right. Okay, and then the fifth line down is total expenditures and other uses. And then the next line down is the difference between those two. I see. So, it's income minus expenses, and, and that's the net income, and where it goes is into the fund balance. Right. Okay. Exactly. So what, what you can see, because our expenditures are increasing so quickly, even though you're operating at with net positive income, mm -hmm. your reserves are still dropping. As a percent of outgo. Right. If, if you look through here and you look at the increases in stirs in particular, you know, that's just a chart like that. It's, it's her money. 
Well, no, but if you look at number two, or it says available reserves, and it has that uh, superscript two. Yeah. And then, you know, that's where you're talking about 2015, 751. Look at what it says for two. Available reserves consist of all unassigned fund balances, including all amounts reserved for economic uncertainties. The economic uncertainties is what we're used to looking at as 15%. No. So it's that. Not, there's, a, there's a level. And is it still 5% or has it gone up to? Well, whatever it is, that 26.2% that includes a lot more than what's on our three year projections as of reserves. I don't, that, that 26, as far as when the state says you have to have five, we voted for 15%. Right. Whatever that number is, it's not, it's never been these 22.4 or 26. The number on this page includes. It says available reserves consist of all unassigned fund balances, all of them, <laughs> including all amounts reserved for economic uncertainties contained with the general fund and the special reserve fund. I'm not saying this number is wrong, but it's not the it's not the uncertainty amount, the reserves that we're all looking at usually. I wish I had the right. budget with me. I'm trying to find right. it on my computer. Yeah, I I think that's well well spoken. Mm -hmm. So the. A significant thing is though that we're we are not we have not operated at a deficit over the past three years, and if the information Scott just gave us is, is realistic, it's likely that we will not this year, even in the budget, show the two hundred thousand dollar deficit. And, so and it's even, really helpful to yeah, even I'm doing the numbers and it may not come all the way to completely erase the two hundred thousand. But it's gonna, it's gonna cut it at least by a third, more like maybe two thirds, because this is what Rebecca. And this has been what's so great about the county and, and Melanie working with her is they got much more conservative about the projections, and so does Barbara Godwin. That they're so they're so conservative about the projections that we always end up with more money than we anticipate, which is so much better than spending spending too much and uh, so those numbers have all in the, in the final analysis they've always been higher than, than what we're seeing here and then you know you have to go back to you know they're real numbers when you get back into the previous years so okay but, yeah. is there more discussion about the other uh, can I have a motion to do we approve it or accept it? Okay. I move that we accept the audit, 1617 audit. I second it. Okay. Uh, thank you. Hannah, one more time. Oh, no. Maybe not one more time. Val will second. Val will second. Member Brownell? Aye. Member Wilson? Aye. Member Wright? Aye. Member Friend? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, so, what we have next on the agenda is closed session, open session, summary, and review of action items. I, I'm going to ask that we review action items past in the calendar before we go into closed session so that those who then have to stay for the closed session can leave. Is that yeah, that's that's acceptable to the board? Mm -hmm. um, are you waiting for something? Mm, yeah, I'm waiting for somebody to speak up and say, okay. "This is this is what I have." Um, well, we've heard Scott. <coughs> excuse me. Heard a couple times tonight. I would like something or a discussion on what to do or what kind of protocol we have when a board bylaw has or some policy or has not been followed. Um, you want that on tap? Like you for? I want to discuss it because right now we can't discuss it because it's not oh. on an agenda. Right. So we're put put that. And so we will have that as an agenda item for the December board meeting. And Scott, I would ask that you get some legal input on that before the 
meeting so that you know, it's not just us floundering around and expressing our opinions. <coughs> I would ask that the board um, decide on a date for their workshop in January. Okay, we, we can't see all the Google stuff. We don't know if everybody's voted. Or, can you help us out with that? Um, Are you saying, Hannah, you want to, to do that now or next month? Wouldn't you want to know now? That's what she said. She, she I would like to make that to the CSBA. There are two dates right. now that are available, and um, I don't know how much longer those two dates will stay. What were they again? I, I know I voted on one, but I can't remember. And the one of them was Saturday the 27th. Right here, uh, yeah. Okay. That's, that's the I was saying, I said no. Oh, that's the one I want. <laughs> well, then you better bring me a birthday present if you get. I'm going to write this down. It's Susan's birthday. You got it. Saturday, January 27th. How young are you going to be? Wednesday, January 24th. No, I'm not bringing you in. What was that last one? Excuse me. I couldn't hear it. Why is it not six hours, which has been before? Why is it only four hours? The CSBA will do whatever it takes. The 24th. And the 27th. So the times may change, I guess is what I'm saying. 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. or 9 to 3. Oh, it's exactly. Well, Terry, you exactly voted for both. Six rather than and four. And Hannah, you voted for both. So they're now available for either. 4 p.m. To, to 10 p.m. If, if it takes a six, six hours, there was a question about why it was only four hours. The question from who? One of the board members. Oh, okay. Yeah, how come Liz isn't up there? And that, you, you have to come to Joy too. Did you pick? Did you vote? I don't. I don't know if I sent the doodles. Yeah, I voted. Correct that. You voted. Uh, oh, you're not up there. Right has not had internet access for the last two weeks, so that's why he hasn't responded. But he just said he voted. Yeah, I think I did. <laughs> oh, you did? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Well, which ones are? What day do you prefer? What'd you vote for? Uh, gotta go look. Because <laughs> I can't see from here. No, I'm with you. When you're when you're looking on the side of this, yeah, yeah. this is worthless. Um, yeah, I don't know what that's for. We need a new building for our board meetings. Yeah, I can tell you that. Yeah. What? You like to be on the side, maybe, or it could be. Um, uh, Which one did you vote for? 24. And, and I assume yeah, I can tell you right now, the 27th is a it's a a 16 team yeah. tournament I for basketball I throughout the throughout <laughs> both Santa Barbara and so, San Luis County. Yeah, there, whenever you go wrong, yeah. And those are the only two dates available. Those are the two dates available in January. You can move to February if you would like me to do that. How about December? <laughs> um, I doubt that it should be available in December. A good beginnings time. workshop. I'm, I'm available. We'd sorely need it. Five no, we need it. So it better be very specific. Okay. Or maybe it's seven. What are you high I'm on? I'm just looking for direction at this moment okay. in time. At 1858. Well, uh, <laughs> have we heard from you? I'm sure. Yeah, he just said he's got a big deal on Saturday. Yeah, there's no way and I can. I have, I have a bigger seven. deal. It's my birthday. I have a commitment on mm -hmm. the 24th, which I can't change. So I, I'm sorry. Okay, so I will go back to the drawing board with CSBA and move to February. Thank can, you. I, can I make a suggestion that if anybody at this exact minute knows what date you can't in February, could you tell Hannah that? Because then that would might help speed up the process. Well, no, don't they give us the... Well, but if she knows already that they're a date, well, like if you had a basketball tournament or something. Are all your Saturdays spoken for in February, too? No. I'm open in February. I don't have anything written down so far for February. Because it's too far out. <laughs> Groundhog Day is on the 2nd. I'll be there. President's Day is the 19th. Okay. Sorry, so, Hannah, we so tried. We have, we have a decision that we're going to try for February. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. So, as far as action items, 
for next month. Uh, Scott, <clears throat> we ask you to get some clarification of the two parts of the language in the Brown Act that seem to be in conflict. One that says we aren't allowed to hear anything, and the other one says that we're allowed to hear things in other well, meetings. Well, the conflict was subject matter jurisdiction or general information. Um, Are we, just so I understand, is that the specific so, thing of It was government code 54952.2C1. Is what we're talking about. I'm working on it. And, uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like clarification because I always, those things that are commas, you know, the, the statement in the center, other than part of the meeting, if you take that out, I think it actually becomes more clear, but to clarification. Because <laughs> this would be the other jurisdictions of the meeting. Of the meeting. That's as clear as mine. So did you did you get both the references? The, the two. So so one of them is five four nine five two dot two C two. The other one is five four nine five two two C is what he said. Right. Point okay, two we're C. At that exception and what does that exception mean? Well, okay, so I want to go back up here. It's this, so, I can try to have this one up here. Five, five, four, nine, five, two, dot two, this one. This goes with this one. Which is the one that talks about Which is the one that we're all hearing, hearing subject matter jurisdiction. jurisdiction. And then the other one Why is, is this a problem? Five, four, nine, five, two, dot two, C, two. If you're having a conversation about me in front of me, you might want to go outside or have a different time. Well, no, they're talking what? about me, so. I don't I say know. they. Okay. Do I'm not say they. Okay, Ron is having I'm a conversation about me. Right? Okay. 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 Which she, one she has, a problem with. Yeah, okay. and I was quite okay. Yeah. But don't, this is, this I don't, don't look okay. at me like I'm just, that. Don't look at me like that. I am not, I am listening. Okay. Are, Under your breath, I'll tell you later. I mean, that's, are, are there other? I. What am I supposed to do? I can't gag him. I know you're right. Correct. Nobody can. Ask him, and, and then. And ask it in public. Okay, so. Uh, in front of all of us, Ron, not with this under your breath comments, please. I, I'm tired of being scolded by you. I'm right. scold, We're scolded if we if we. If we speak out about the question, or are scolded if one person asks. Uh, I'm not scolding. I'm just saying if you're having a conversation right. about me, all right. All right. I would like well, to hear that's, it. That's not. It's not scolding. Conversation. Exactly, it's not appropriate. That's I'm asking well, you to I'm, not do so it. So I'm asking you to stop it. All of you. Okay. So we are going to go now back to closed session. Can I ask a question? Yes. It was the 54952.2C2. Right. And what was the other one? 54952.2A. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so now we'll return to item number 11, closed session. And I don't want you to witness me, I'm turning this off. I'm not going to be recording this.